mental health has become a huge problem in this country. Very quickly, people are medicated and lots of medication has its own side effects. When you don't have access to decent health, to decent health care, you go off the medication and then there's huge ramifications. In, in our ancient texts it is written that when there is adharma when relationships between people breaks down that's when the evils of kali yuga starts up kali yuga is the age that we live in in Kali Yuga, there are all kinds of problems. It is the last Yuga before the dissolution of the world. That's when all the problems are going to, going to surface, going to start. If, if you think about it, when you have a big family unit, there is someone the children are always taken care of. It used to be for a long time that you could rely on your parents for childcare support. That your parents lived down the road, in the same street, in the same town, in the same village, you know, close by, close enough for you to have that help, that support. But our modern age, people want their space. People want their private space. And the problem is, they're cutting off the beauty, the advantage of community. Now, when you say community, it does not mean that, you know, you, you have just your parents or your, your mother, your sister, your family, but an extended family. It makes a huge difference for children, if you see children that grow up with this big family of aunts and uncles and grannies, and people that they can go to if there's a problem. Hmm? Now, the, what the family used to do is taken up by therapists. Now you go one-on-one -on -one with the therapist and the therapist listens to you and um, comes up with some solutions, more often than not, recommends that you visit, you see a psychiatrist or somebody else, you're diagnosed with something, depression or bipolar disease or whatever, and then you start the medication and then you feel good, you feel very good. But all this medication has side effects. Yes, as long as you're on the medication, the sun sh shines brighter, you know, you feel like you can handle a lot of it. What if there was something small that you could do, something for 15 or 20 minutes in a day, that actually changes your ability to view the world? What if I told you that if you did your breathing and you did your med uh, meditation every day, that could change a lot of things. That if you just introduced one activity in your week, which is totally about serving someone else, working in a prison, working in a homeless shelter, working in anything, what if I told you that if you changed your sleep pattern, that if you sleep at 10 o'clock at night and wake up at 5.30, 6 in the morning and go for a little walk, just that modification can make a whole big difference to your mental health. What if I said that once a month you meet with friends to just laugh, 
once a week, why once a month, once a week, mm -hmm. to just laugh and have a good time and do nothing in particular. There are small things that we can do each and every day that has a huge impact for me personally. I was put on Zoloft for 10 years. 10 years I was put on Zoloft. And it leaves you dead. It leaves you dead, unable to feel, unable to emote, unable to relate to the world. When I learned how to meditate, when I learned how to breathe, I said, I'm not going to take that again. The breath work left me so energized. And I did, it didn't have that effect in one week. It took about a year of regular breathing, of meditating every day, of trusting that I will feel better after doing this for me to be able to give that up. But I did give it up. And I'm never going to look back. I know that I have this foundation of breathing, meditation and knowledge that can see me through anything in this lifetime. It's not just one. It's not just one. It is a combination. These things that we do in our life work together. You have to have a little bit of everything. So if you just meditate and live in a cave, it might not help you that much. If you meditate and you have a good night's sleep and you eat nutritious food at the right times without eating junk food, right? And you in, uh, surround yourselves with at least one group of people that nurtures you, that loves you for your sake alone, that has nothing to gain from you because you know, you're know you gonna give them something or, or you're their boss or you're connected to them in that way. Just a few people around you who nurture you because you are you. A partner that holds your hand in good times. If your partner holds your hand in good times, then you walk through the bad times as if it's a good time. The bad times never feel so bad. You start these habits when life is good, not when it all comes crashing down. The unfortunate part is I've noticed like during COVID, we almost had 50 people on this call. 50, 25, 30 people coming, right? Oh, things were bad, things were bad. Oh, as soon as they've got shopping malls to go to and, and holidays to go to, oh, yeah, life's good now. Now I don't need anything until I lose my job. Oh, then I know oh, I better meditate. I better do all this. I better go do yoga, you know. And most people, most people will stop with the body. Will stop with the body. Yeah, they'll go for their walk. They'll, go, they'll join the gym, see that, that their muscles are good. They'll eat their uh, 60 grams of protein a day or whatever they do. But they never think about the mind. There is something that is behind it all, controlling all of it. If you are in a bad space, guaranteed there's going to be something that's going to happen to your body. I'll tell you seriously for myself, I was struggling with getting my medication. With, you know, talking to, uh, and it was making me very tense because I'd completely run out of diabetic medications. This is this wonderful country that uh, allows you to do that and doesn't, um, you know, care whether you're, you're covered or you're not covered. And I'm talking to the insurance, talking to the doctors, talking to the assistants, and it was making me tense. And sure enough, I bent down to pick up a towel yesterday and my back got in a spasm. And I always know, I always know that if I'm in a bad mental space, some illness will follow. Your body gets weak. The vibrations that go through your body become bad. Once all this collects in your chakras, it will manifest in disease. It will. 
And for a while, things might be perfect. Things might be perfect. But if you keep living a stressful life, without attending to it, without taking care to release the stress. And I don't mean you go on vacation and drink till you fall asleep. I don't mean that. That is the worst thing you can do for yourself. That is the worst thing to, that you can do for yourself. Because again, you're stressing your body out. You're totally stressing your body out. Your mind is what takes care of everything else. You can be in the midst of cancer and sail through it if your mind is in a good place. If you have the right attitude to what's happening to you. Ramana Maharishi refused all medication. Apparently the smile never left his face even though he must have been in incredible pain. It is possible not to feel any pain at all if your mind is in a good place. I have known people that just meditate through surgeries that they don't feel the pain. Like they're so frightened of taking the injection. I'm not talking about major surgeries, you know, something in the eye or some, you know, minor surgeries. I have heard of people doing that. If you are in a bad place, you can get an attack, a panic attack, even while taking an MRI. Your mental health is so important. It comes before everything you do. What do you need to do? How do you need to modify your life? There are two things, two modifications that impact several others, several others. One is breath work and one is sleep. If your circadian rhythm is perfect, that is you have, you go to sleep at the right time, you wake up at the right time and in the morning you spend a lot of time looking at bright sunlight, you go back to sleep again. The sleep, sleeping well, changes many things in your life. And if you are depressed and if you are um, scared, if you are frightened, the first thing that goes is sleep. You will not be able to sleep properly. Getting a good night's sleep is a blessing. It is a blessing. And if you're getting that, don't worry about it. Your mental health is 50% covered. It's taken care of. Add the breath work. Add the breath work. Small changes, 10 minutes of breath work a day impacts how the rest of the day is going to go. It impacts every system in your body. It, it impacts your blood pressure. It impacts your heart rate. It impacts the way the hormones are released. It releases endorphins into your body. It controls the level of cortisols. If any of you have attended my, my class on breath work, I have explained to you what breath work, just breath work alone does. And it's 10 minutes a day. It's not a lot. It is doable. Do it for six weeks. Give it a shot. Try the Hamsa Pranayama for six weeks and see how it changes everything. What happens is that because you're in a good place, you're able to deal with whatever your problems that come in your life in a healthy way. The first thing that people do as soon as they face a problem is they pick up a drink. Some pick up drugs. These are not healthy ways of dealing with life's problems. You have a choice. Are you making a healthy or an unhealthy choice? This is the whole thing. Doing, getting good breath work, getting good exercise in, getting, uh, going out to get sunshine first thing in the day. These are simple things in your life. They don't cost any money. They don't cost you anything. They impact your life hugely. Why won't you do it? Why won't you meditate? 
I get so saddened by people that refuse to meditate. It's not for me. 15 minutes of meditation is equivalent to about four or six hours of good sleep. You get into those zones where the parasympathetic system simply kicks in. It, the process of repairing and rejuvenating old cells kicks in. So much happens. It's 15 minutes of your day. Why won't you meditate? People stop with just the body, but you are not just your body. Your body actually would function perfectly well, perfectly well if you didn't interfere with your thoughts. If your thoughts didn't come in the way, there would be no question of stress, right? What are you stressed about? It's not that there's a sensation in the body. It's Thinking about that sensation in the body. Oh my God, now my blood pressure is high. Oh my God, my blood pressure is high. Now I might have a stroke. If I have a stroke, then who's going to look after me? I don't have the money for medications. Whatever your, your worries are, whatever your cares, I don't have anyone to take care of me. It is that which gives you the anxiety. It is not the physical problem itself. The physic Whenever you have a situation, your body knows how to deal with it. People have been known to run from lions, lift up cars and do all kinds of things when the adrenaline kicks in. Your body has a, has a way of taking care of itself. If you don't interfere with your mind, your body has superior intelligence to yours. You don't have to tell it to do anything. Automatically, the need to do other things will, will, will start. You have to go down the track of how can I connect more with nature? Right? We get so caught up. We get so caught up with what's happening around us. We get pulled into this area and this feeling that oh, we need our space, we need our boundaries, we need our, all of this. People are so important. People are so, so important. You have to understand that you were never born to live alone on an island. You were born to react to people, to be with people, to laugh and to enjoy yourself. You need to do this often for good mental health. And I don't mean going to a bar and, and getting, getting so drunk that you can't wake up in the morning. In fact, I get really upset when on New Year's Eve, people drink to a point of where they completely pass out and they begin the new year on such a bad note. That's not how you want your entire year to go filled with headaches and body aches and throwing up and this, that and the other. Think about how you want to lead your life. Think about how you want your life to go. Small things, small changes in your life can mean so much. Just a little change in your sleep, a, a small change in your diet, and we don't need to do all of it at the same time. We can introduce these things into our life and see how it pans out. I'm your person for meditation and breathing. Perhaps someone else will be your person for nutrition. Perhaps your friend circle is already there, right? Tap into it. Go out and serve the world. Go do something for someone in need. Don't have to do it every day. Even once a month. You know, give your time, give your energy, give all your talents to someone else. Share with the world. All of this creates, puts you into a space that is wonderful, that is comfortable, that is lovely. And even if you have bad times, you can sail through it effortlessly. Oh, my God.
Hey everyone, thanks for visiting my channel. And if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to hit the red subscribe button and turn on notifications so I can continue to bring you more content just like this on knowledge, on meditation and on insights for a happy life. Don't forget, happiness is your birthright.